Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Woody Banter Book Club podcast. I am Maddie, here with... Courtney, hello, and today we will be reviewing I Kissed Sarah Wheeler by Casey McQuinston. Shara. Shara, I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Stacey McQuinston. Who, at the, who hasn't Casey, kissed Shara Wheeler? Casey McQuinston. <laughs> I think you said Stacey McQuinston. I meant to say Casey McQuinston. Lots of, oh, sorry, folks. You get it. We've yep. got there. Yep. Um, and this is Maddie's episode. Yeah. Take it away. Hello. First of all, we need to address the elephant in the room if you are a video watcher. I am wearing cat girl ear headphones right now. Per. I uh, per, but I look stupid. <laughs> okay. And I'm well aware that I look stupid. I just uh, my headphones, my regular headphones were dead and I forgot to charge them cuz I I got like literally 20 things I got to do today. So like it just slipped my mind cuz I'm an idiot. Anyway. And and those are from a past life. Yeah, this is from when I'm a, I I never even use these anymore. I'm still a gamer girl. I don't use these. I just I was <laughs> hmm, yeah, no. I just raw dog sound now like I, I just <laughs> have I just have like two speakers and my microphone doesn't pick them up and my speakers are really good, so like I don't even use headphones anymore. So Yeah. Wow. Okay. Surround sound. Mm, yeah. All right, let's talk about I kissed Shara Wheeler. Now, I Kiss Shara Wheeler follows three characters. Okay, we've got our main character, who is Chloe. And Chloe lives in a small town in Alabama. She's relatively new. She moved there after her after eighth grade. So she's been there for the entire duration of high school. And one day, she's just minding her own business when this girl, Shara Wheeler, who is the most popular girl in school, she's the beautiful blonde skinny you know if you saw glee i saw somebody c compare her to quinn fabre and i was like yeah no that's who i'm seeing um which is even funnier given what happens later on down the road um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she she kisses her and she's like super thrown off guard by it like thrown, caught off guard by this because her and Sarah Wheeler have not gotten along at all for the last four years. In fact, they have been in direct competition with one another for the valedictorian spot since they are now seniors and getting ready to, to graduate. Uh, Chloe is gearing up for that, uh, you know, valedictorian spot and Sarah is her only real competition. Well, she gets kissed by Sarah Wheeler and then Sarah Wheeler disappears. Okay, they have their big prom event and Sarah is gone. She she leaves prom and then she's just gone. And it, this throws Chloe through a test of time where she is now trying to figure out what the heck happened to Sarah Wheeler. And to do this, this is by the way the first like chapter of the book. She breaks into this girl's house <laughs> where she is looking for evidence to prove that Sara Wheeler is not who everybody thinks she is and that she is a bad person and nobody should care that she's gone. But also, she's a little curious what happened to her. Anyway, while she's breaking into this girl's room, another person shows up to break into Sara's room. And this character is Rory. And Rory is the stoner, you know, like... Teenage cool. dirtbag, baby. Yeah, he's a teenage dirtbag. And he is breaking in to Sarah's room as well. And both Sarah, or not Sarah, both Chloe and Rory find a little pink letter that's like, hey guys, uh, here's like a little code. Enjoy. And that's when they are paired up then. Oh, so, hold on. She finds out that Rory also got kissed by Sara Wheeler, like, right before she disappeared. Like, the same, like, the same night that she disappeared. So, uh, she and Ro Chloe and Rory go and they decide they're gonna tell Sara's boyfriend, whose name is Smith, and they go and they tell Smith, and Smith is like, okay, well, that's weird. Um, and they're like, well, also, she left, like, this letter. Do you know, you know, what this letter is for? He goes, it's my locker combination. And that's how the three of them get intertwined with one another. And together, the three of them are hunting down clues looking for Sara Wheeler. Now, this story is 
not what I expected it to be. I'm honestly a little disappointed with it. It's not... I, re- I was really, really enjoying the story, and I still want to give Casey McQuinston props because I think that they are, like, an excellent writer. And I did enjoy reading this book. It is kind of a little bit more suited for television, I think. I think that this story would do really good in the era of Pretty Little Liars, Riverdale, Glee. It kind of combines all of those. Uh, Courtney said earlier, 13 Reasons Why, she texted me. Like, it just fits into, like, that teen drama-y, you know. Whoa. The police are coming for you. (laughs) They I've been said, a bad girl. Yeah. Um, anyhow, so the, the, it kind of fits into like that sort of realm of media consumption. I thought the book, it also like had Mean Girls references, but it also reminded me a lot of Mean Girls, the way that they talk about Sara. Oh my gosh, what is going on over there? <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been upgraded to a felony over here. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> They're, they're looking for Sarah Wheeler, actually. That's what they're doing. They, they should be <laughs> criminal. Yes. Anyhow, um, yeah, so that's kind of my preface for all of this. If you've not joined us before, we're going to get into a spoiler-free section review, and then we'll move on to the spoilers. And we're not going to spoil anything that happens to you, or happens to you. Oh, my God. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully nothing happens to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to spoil anything that happens in the story to you. So if you have not read the book and you want to, like, don't worry. We'll let you know. We're going to move on to the spoilers. This book is going to be kind of hard and probably the spoiler free section is going to be pretty short because there's a pretty big twist in like the middle of the book. So, all right, Courtney, would you recommend this book to a fellow reader? Mm, This is going to be controversial, perhaps. I would not. (laughs) I didn't like it. Um, I felt like the characters were, like, very disconjuncted. I felt like some of them were, like, like, they didn't, a lot of them didn't have, like, a consistent basis throughout. Like, I felt like they changed too much. And, I mean, when you're talking about the shows earlier, it's, like, every single, like, teenage drama show sorry, cat hair, uh, merged into, like, one story, and it was just, like, too much for me, you know, like, I, I, it feels like, I don't know, like, you know, when you go to Costco, and, like, there's way too many people, like, that's how reading this book felt to me, and I'm, I will say that, like, the, like, I liked Casey McQuinston's other book, obviously, we gave it some of the best awards on our award show, uh, you know, this past couple months, uh, but like, I just, I wasn't a huge fan of this. I don't know. It was just too much. And like the plot was kind of hard to follow. I didn't like how much it changed. So I would recommend other Casey McQuinston books, but probably not this one, to be honest. Yeah, I was not impressed with this book. I think it's probably, I think it's their lowest rated book also on Goodreads. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, the thing is, like, I don't think I would recommend this book to somebody of our age. I think that this book is really good for, like, teenagers. I think teenagers would really like this book. Um, especially ones that are, like, queer. Like, they'll they'll like this book quite Mm -hmm. a bit. I don't think that this book was made for adults, which is fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I just wouldn't recommend it, I think, to, like, an adult but to somebody younger, yeah. Um, um, okay. Oh, yeah. I think to to a younger crowd, sure. I my I don't think my my sisters are pretty religious and like they're cool with gay people. It has nothing to do, that. but like the 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 religious people in this book aren't necessarily portrayed in like a good way, which to some extent is true, especially because it takes place in the south um and there are people who like are gay and also have like a relationship with god but um i don't know honestly i think my sisters would be kind of like offended by some of those representations on like a large scale so they they dog on religion just a little bit which in this i mean like 
there's people abusing power, which happens in religious settings a lot. But like, I don't think my sisters personally would like it, but I do think a teenager would. And it's not inappropriate either. Yeah. Like there's not a lot of. So moving to, would you recommend it to a younger listener or or reader? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I thought when you said it would be good for teenagers. I thought that was you just saying like you would recommend no, it no, to no. a younger I was, person. I was, I was still gonna have like the uh, the segue into that portion. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think that this book is really good for somebody who's younger. It's it's got the the angsty teenage vibe to it. Um, and we'll talk about this later on down the line. I was hoping. This is just going to be a good young adult book. I was hoping for a little bit more out of the story towards the end. And I thought that the uh, purpose of all of it was going to be a little bit different than what it ended up being. And I really hate the way that it ended up being. Um, But other than that, like, I think like a teenager will like this. Okay. Especially if you are a queer teenager, you will like this. Probably. Maybe. You might not like it, but... I think I'm just getting to the point where I'm, like, too old to enjoy books that are set in high school. Yeah. I also feel that way. I read a book a couple of years ago, actually. I, I liked it mostly. It was called uh, Small Town Monsters, and it's a young adult book, and it's about, like, this girl who's in high school, and she, like, you know, runs into, like, her parents demons that they hunt because they're monster hunters anyway um and i just was like you know what like i just like going to class like i can't relate i've been out of high school for eight years (laughs) at least that type of class like it's just a different set i can still read college books and be okay i'm i'm even starting to transition out of that Mm -hmm. to be honest um but yeah, I just don't think it's for people our age range. I think you hit the nail on the head yeah. with that. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to our four pillars. We have four pillars, which are the character development, the smut, the realism, and the witty banter. There is no smut in this book. Um, so I think we should replace it with mystery, because this book is kind of like a mystery. Yes. And honestly, I don't know if witty banter even really plays a role in this, because it's not a romance book. It. It is a, it's a, it's like Pretty Little Liars kind of, you know, Mm -hmm. where like, there's like romance in it, but it's not a romance book. So, I don't know. Just do like dialogue? Sure. We could just do dialogue. Okay. Okay. Let's start with, let's start with dialogue. What what would you like the dialogue? Um... Well, here, let me talk about it a little bit first. I think I think the main character is kind of a little bit of a neurotic nut job. Um, and she just, like, hyper fixates on this, right? And then, like, be- I think it's also because it's, like, a drama and it's very, like, teen-based, like, high school-based. It's – everyone is, like, over-exaggerated, right? Like, the teenage dirtbag is super, like, sultry and he steals – um like like street signs and stuff um and like don't get me wrong maddie and i dabbled in stealing like grocery carts and also um traffic cones that's why the police were actually coming earlier Nope, no, we We never did that no Mm, we were too busy praying um (laughs) anyways uh and like the jock is really jockey and like so uh, were there funny parts? Sure. I just thought the main character was like really neurotic, to be honest. And I was like, "Girl, relax." Um. And and, so, and like, there were parts of it that were okay. I don't. Know, I just feel very like meh about the dialogue. So I'll give it a two. A high I- two. The problem with the dialogue is that you're right. She was very neurotic. And every time she spoke, you could tell that she was kind of like spastastic, you know, like just like Mm -hmm. kind of spazzing out. And um, I just like I I feel like she just needed to like go to yoga, you know, learn some 
mindfulness a little bit because she was a little wackadoodle. Um, yeah. And the other characters, they were caricatures of the people that they're supposed to be. And because of that, their dialogue was like just so predictable. Like the yeah. football guy was a little, you know, airheaded, you know. I'm I'm not like the other football players. Yeah. Okay, Finn from Glee. Um, <laughs> R.I.P. Corey Monteith. Uh, Monteith? Monteith? I don't know. Whatever. R.I.P. Um, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, I would give it probably a two as well. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, mm. what about the uh, mystery? How would you rate the mystery on a scale of one to five? Um, I don't know. I, I have some conflicting thoughts, right? Because, like, I thought parts of the book were predictable, but, like, the culmination of the mystery just was very, like, lackluster to me. Um, and after a while, like, the little notes Sarah Wheeler was leaving, I was like, this girl's annoying. Like, I don't know. It, it's what well, like a good example of mystery to me. Yeah, Shara sucks. Is like Ninth House, right? Like I thought that was the a good plot of of like mystery, right? And that's more like murder mystery. For some reason, this kind of along the same lines to me. Again, that's it's very like Pretty Little Liars, Riverdale, Thirteen Reasons Why. Especially with the letters, with, that is what reminded me of Thirteen Reasons Why. With like little cassettes, Shara Wheeler disappears. Um, but, like, it just, I think it's just because it felt like so many shows, like TV shows being mushed into one book that it just felt, like, kind of chaotic, that the mystery wasn't, like, that compelling to me. At a certain point, I was like, I don't really care where Chara Wheeler is, honestly. Uh, and I don't really care about, like, what her goals are. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to give that a two as well, I think. Yeah, the mystery, I really enjoyed the mystery part of the story of them looking for her and looking for the clues and stuff like that. I I would probably give it a three just okay. because I enjoyed that aspect of it. But yeah, I the mysteries, the conclusion of the mystery sucks and I hate it. So yeah, boo. Boo. Um, yeah, okay. What about the character development on a scale of one to five? <laughs> Without any spoilers. Well, Shara Wheeler sucks. Chloe is neurotic. Um, teenage dirtbag boy and jock. I thought that was like kind of predictable about halfway through the book. I don't know, I don't really feel like they really had any character development like Shara's character development didn't make sense because it was like mm -hmm. a whole 180 without putting in any of the groundwork I thought the only character development that I liked was between Chloe and her best friend Georgia right there's kind of a miscommunication Chloe gets consumed by this mystery and so she neglects her friend and her friend is also you know, making a decision that's going to kind of change their future plans and she's putting off telling her or like Chloe will run off to go work on the mystery when she tries and tells her and like they reconcile at the end um, because Chloe does something kind of throws herself on the sword for Georgia, her friend, and then they come back together. I felt like that was, and then and then they figure out how to make their friendship work and both be happy in their independent lives. I felt like that was the only really, like, super meaningful character development for me. But there's so many characters in this book, and that was such a minor subplot that I don't mm -hmm. think it saves it. And, like, I just found a lot of the characters bland or dislikable or just, like, not consistent. And so it was really hard for me. So I think I'm going to give that a two as well. I I would honestly probably give it a one, to be honest. I think mm -hmm. that Chloe's is, like, regression. Like, I think that she mm -hmm. is... Normally, you know, like, 
the char- the way that we rank character development is like how how did the character change over a period of time? Did we like it? Like there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. I did not like her character development at all, and I think that her character development is going to make things worse for her in the end. So I'm gonna give it a one. Um, Shara's character development came out of left field. It makes no sense. Uh, the character development of the boys, um, Rory and Smith. I also kind of feel like that came out a little out of left field as well. It, it became a little bit more, the, both of their stories became a little bit more like apparent throughout the, throughout the book. Um, but like, it just, it kind of just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. And then what really throws me off is like the town character development where I'm just like, okay, we are in fantasy land now. <laughs> this is not even kind of remotely yeah. something that will be happening, but that's a good segue. By the way, this is a one for me. I can't remember if I said. Anyway, uh, that's a good se- segue though, into the realism category on a scale of one to five. Personally, I would give it a one. I think that this is just like a work of fiction a work of fantasy and i i can't believe how the way that this book ended i would give it a one also it felt like reading two different books or watching eight different tv shows and like i said shara wheeler has like a total 180 that makes no sense the town's progression makes no sense the the pacing in the beginning is pretty good And then you get halfway through the book and it's just absolute garbage. Like the mystery drags on. The resolution is not satisfying. And then after the resolution, there's like a lot of the book left. Yeah. The resolution of the mystery. And like, I was just bored after that. I was like, let's wrap this up. I don't care about any of this stuff anymore. (laughs) Um. I don't know. I have, we'll get into this in the spoilers. I have like eight different ways in which this book could have ended better. What would you give the book overall on a scale of one to five? Two. I gave it a three because I did enjoy the mystery part of it. And I think it's a good story for a certain group of people. I don't think I'm that group of people. And I hated the way it ended. And it was just very disorganized and like I had high expectations, I think, to a certain extent because of how much I like red, white and royal Mm -hmm. blue. And this just felt like an entirely different author. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was just a a mess. And like the mystery was okay in the beginning, but I don't it's not enough to save it for me. Um, So, yeah, I'm going to stick with it, too. Okay. All right, so we're going to be moving on to the spoiler section of this book. If you have not read the book and you want to, like, don't be here because we're about to spoil the entire ending for you. And that's kind of the the joy of reading this particular book, because it's not like a romance where it's predictable at the end. Um, And yeah, uh, okay, you have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Bye. Okay, let's talk about that. Now I can say what I want to say. Yeah. Okay, Uh, let's hear it. Everyone in this book is gay. Every single person (laughs) is gay at this religious high school. In the middle of Alabama. In the middle of Bama. uh, And, like, (laughs) I don't know. I'm all for representation. But, like, every single person is gay? Yeah. I don't know. Here, okay. So, as the mystery progresses, right, like, Chloe starts to get closer, like, friendship closer with um, Smith and Rory, right? And I thought for a while that, like, they were all going to start liking Chloe because Chloe is, like, bisexual in the book. And I was like, ooh, that would make for some good tension because clearly something's going on with Shara Wheeler, right? But, like, I thought maybe Rory would like her or Smith or something, That would make more sense to me, honestly. But then we come to find out through, like, letters and our interaction with Shara when we catch that little sneaky mm, (laughs) that, like, Rory and Smith are into each other and they always have been and they're secretly gay. And I was like, uh, okay. Yeah. And the only, like, the only prelude to that, because Rory's like, I'm in love with Shara and Smith is literally dating her. Is that, like, Smith is kind of, like, meh 
about Shara, and then he puts flowers in his hair. Yeah, and paints his nails and, like, does a little bit of makeup. And I'm like, this is not the gender identity representation that I think is, like, useful. I don't know, maybe it's useful for, like, younger people to see themselves in these characters, you know? I just I, I didn't like I did not like it like I have no there's no issue with him having that sort of you know internal struggle and wanting to change the way that he's perceived but I think that the way that it was just executed was not it was very like like a last minute little throw it in plot it didn't point. make yeah it didn't make sense for the plot to me like no I and we'll get through a few other points I think before I I say how the book could have been better and I think you have similar notions Mm -hmm. I can feel it in our neural link um (laughs) but uh so finally they go on solve all these mysteries right finding these notes that Shara left behind and Chloe finally figures it out after she's like alienated all her friends she's not talking to Rory or Smith anymore either because like they got their own little thing and she's psycho and she's hyper fixated on this she goes and finds Shara and she's like Shara you suck and you wrote all those letters because you're in love with me and Shara's like no I'm not and then they kiss and then she pushes Shara into the lake off the boat and um i'm like okay so i'm like cool shara sucks so i'm hoping like she just has to like kind of have like a i'm sorry i suck everyone and like deal with her stuff right and then like chloe's gonna grow from this and she's gonna go off into college no no, what she's Shara, still. What does Shara do? Shara does an Instagram live. <laughs> she goes on Instagram live to issue this apology. She's like, I'm a liar about everything, and I'm sorry, and I'll be back at school on Monday. By the way, this is like 55% of the way into the book. Yeah, and I'm like, what the hell? And there's a lot of, like, pop culture references, so I was like, eh. Eh, I don't like that. Um... Like, I don't know, I thought, I if she's going to have that little redemption moment, she should have just, like, shown up at the school and done that. But yeah. whatever. So she goes back to school, and she she cuts her hair, and she dyes it pink, and she's hanging like out with Quinta Rory. Ray. Yeah. <laughs> Glee. <laughs> and she's hanging out with Rory and Smith, and she's like, this whole time I was trying to push Rory and Smith together because I knew that they liked each other. And... I'm just a manipulative person and I that's why I did this. And then she's like I'm not a man I love everyone. I just want to help everyone and I'm like who are you? Right? Yeah. And then she she's got like she cuts her hair, she dyes it pink, but her dad is like the religious principal of the school. Right? And so I'm like okay, are your parents like freaking out? Cuz we don't really get like a ton of context for that, right? Right. And uh, Chloe's life is just kind of like in shambles. And then she, nobody's talking to her. She's not talking to anybody. She's trying to get revenge on Shara by like playing these games back. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Right. Yeah. And then uh, her best friend gets caught. Her best friend is lesbian. Her best friend gets caught kissing a girl in the bathroom. And Shara. Runs all the way across campus to tell Chloe that um, it was her best friend that got caught and that she's in the principal's office. So Chloe goes to the principal's office and she's like, it was me. I was the one kissing a girl. Call my parents. So that saves her relationship with Georgia, like her friendship with Georgia. And then she's like, oh, Shara did that because she cares about me. Um, And then... The end of the book, and then so she's she's been like fighting to be valedictory in this whole time. And when she confronts Shara on the boat, Shara's like, "I did this to distract you because I wanted to be valedictorian." And then Which later I at loved. school, she's right. That would have been good. But then later at right. school, she's like, "No, it's because I in love with you." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Why can't you, why can't she just be a villain? Right? Why can't she just be a villain? Like, there's no we don't need to do this type of redemption." arc where like they still end up together i don't like that um and so 
you know, she gets, Chloe gets in trouble for taking the fall for Georgia and then she doesn't get to be valedictorian and the whole high school, all the gays in solidarity are like, well, we're not going to walk either. We're going to do our own graduation. Um, and then since everybody at the school is gay, apparently they all go across the street to CarMax where they, <laughs> where they have this graduation ceremony. Yeah, this mod and podge- also, It comes out that uh Sarah's Shara's dad has been like a, a what is it called? Uh what an college admission scandal. scandal. Yeah, it's a college. Uh, no, it's a high school admission scandal, and that's just like where did there that was also come from? zero. Yeah, zero groundwork <laughs> laid for that. Not at all. But, I mean, so like we can tell he sucks, right? And he's like he's obviously a, like he's a bigot, um, mm-hmm. and he actively hates Chloe, and like he's just kind of a douche throughout the whole book, right? But like. There's absolutely no groundwork laid for that whatsoever. It comes out of left field and in a Mean Girls moment. It's literally copying Mean Girls. Like, there's flyers yes. all over the school. And everyone's like, oh, my God. College admission scandal. Uh, school yeah. admission scandal. And so that's the part where I'm like, okay, this is just, like, so, like, it was too much. It's, like, it's glee. It's mean girls. It's 13 Reasons Why. It's Pretty Little Liars. It's Riverdale. And all mished together in this monstrosity that's horrific. And then uh, Shara is like, I'm the one who exposed my dad. And then she, like, Chloe shows up at her house. And they they sneak out. They stink Shara out of her house and they go and have dinner with Chloe's gay moms. And then everything is right in the world and everything is sunshine and rainbows and everyone's happy except for Shara's dad. Yeah. And that's it's. How I, that's how I know this book was written for like teenagers because it was just like. It was such like a satisfying ending for somebody who's like just really rooting for the downfall of this particular man right like like that is like the epitome of like shitty religious people yeah um and that is like something else i really did not like about the book is that well okay let's talk a little bit about like what we expect this is kind of like going into like what i expected the ending to be i expected the ending to be that shara had been doing this for one of two reasons one Um, she was upset at Rory and, uh, Smith for having feelings for one another, that she, um, was using this goose hunt, wild goose chase to get Chloe off of her grind, her, her academic grind so that she could have the spot as valedictorian and that she herself was a villain and not a good person and that this was all that would have been a a better ending than what we got alternatively i thought that the ending could be what was i gonna say what was my other ending i don't know i mean i think i would have made more sense to me if they ended up as like friends and like like Shara came to terms with her sexuality and stuff. But like oh. after being that deeply wronged, the fact mm-hmm. that she just kind of accepts the 180 in personality and Chloe's like, yeah, let's be together. I've actually always been super into you, which like you can yeah. throughout the book, you can tell that she's like attracted to her at certain points. And she admits that she's bi, like she has lesbian mom. So she has been like open about it the whole time. But mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I think The plot would have been more compelling if after she confronted Shara, like, Shara got what she wanted. She gets to be valedictorian and, like, her and Chloe make amends at some point and they decide to be, like, friends because Shara has, like, learned her lesson and Chloe has also learned her lesson, right? Like, that her friends, like, Georgia, matter more than, like, hyperfixating on this stuff or, like, just the singular goal of being valedictorian, Mm -hmm. and i i think the plot then with like rory and smith would have been fine alternatively um because 
Chloe is like bisexual, I thought like because they're all hanging out so much, it would come down more to like for a while. I thought right because Shara is kind of like wreaking havoc upon their lives. For a while, I thought like oh maybe Smith and like Chloe can have some good um, chemistry or something, right? And then that's like kind of Chloe's revenge, but it's not really revenge because like they end up together, right? Shara does all this stuff. Um, to like manipulate everybody but like something good comes out of it um and like uh, she's also bi so I thought that was a possibility um I also to be honest at a certain point I was like maybe Smith Rory and Chloe will be a thruple I don't know (laughs) um but (laughs) this my other my alter my other alternative ending that I was trying to think of was that Shara really was the smartest person in the room and saw how Chloe perceived everybody around her and how she Mm -hmm. just put everybody into these boxes. And by forcing her to spend time with people that Shara liked, like, not like romantically, just in general, like Smith and Rory, who are two queer people, um, or spent like getting her out of her, her... Uh, California is so much better than Alabama and this place sucks and everybody is so awful all the time by having her introduced to the idea that like people are not just in these boxes that you have put them in even like because she's trying so hard to be like the person who stands out and to be so different from everybody else but then she puts everybody else down constantly like Mm -hmm. for example her best friend Georgia is still religious, even though she is a queer person. Mm -hmm. And I thought that she even, her best friend even tells her that like, she's not as open-minded as she thinks she is. And I thought that was kind of what Shara was trying to show her was that like, you're not as open-minded as you think you are, which I also would have really liked as well. I think so too. And like, I don't know. I don't think uh, Shara's redemption arc didn't make sense. A different one would have been better, or you could have just let her be the villain. Like, right? She orchestrates all the stuff, but Chloe still learns like a really valuable lesson and has made friends because of it. And yeah, like it also could have been like teaching her that lesson in a vindictive sense, right? Not in like mm-hmm. a giving sense. Like you think you're so smart, but like look at all these people who can teach you these lessons kind of thing. Right. And then Char gets mm-hmm. valedictorian and Chloe doesn't, she gets disappointed for once. And then she just kind of learns from it and goes on with her life. But I don't think her and Shara should have ended up together. It didn't really make sense to me that Shara was like into her. The, the story felt very like half baked it felt like multiple different stories being merged together just didn't see a lot of co like cohesive writing throughout and like if you would have stopped the book at the halfway point and had like a 50 page resolution it would have been significantly better but it feels like so many disjointed parts just like duct tape together and so it wasn't an enjoyable experience and it didn't make sense and it literally like i've said a billion times in this episode it literally just feels like every teenage tv show merged into one non-cohesive plot and it's just not like that's just not enjoyable to me i think like maybe the drama like the drama is appealing to some people especially if you're younger but like I like drama too. I just like a plot that makes sense. And like, Mm -hmm. you can make a good story and have like an unpredictable twist. But what you can't do is like, not lay the foundations for certain things and call that a plot twist. Right. It's just like, it just was not good. And it was so shocking to read that after enjoying Red, White, and Royal Blue so much. Mm -hmm. Like it... Truly, and I I think, too, I'm a little harsh on this book because of how much I like that one. Like, I think I had way too high expectations going into this. But, I mean, if you have a hit book like that, you have to, like, really stay on your game, I think, when you continue writing. And this is just, this is something I would expect as, like, a debut novel from Mm -hmm. somebody, you know? I want to look. Yeah, I want to look at the Goodreads scores for 
their other books because mm. I think that this is their least, like their lowest rated book. Mm-hmm. It has a 3.9 average on Goodreads. And Red, White, and Royal Blue has a 4.09. One Last Stop has a 3.93. And the pairing has not come out yet. Um, that book will be out in August. Um, but it already has a 4.4. So, like, all the people who oh. work copies have given it a pretty good scoring. Um, so, yeah. the I will say that this book also came out in... 2022 i believe so you know right off the hype yeah may 3rd 2022 so that's right off the hype of red white and royal blue which is a book that came out in 2020 right or 2019 um 2019 so yeah um i'm not opposed to like i'm casey if on the off chance you're watching this I love you. Like, I'm not going to stop reading your books or anything that you ever make because Red, White, and Royal Blue is, honest to God, one of my favorite books I've ever read. Mm-hmm. Um, no, One Last Stop came out before this book. Okay. But um, but I'm not going to stop reading your books, okay? I'm still going to read them all. And uh, this one just, I it wasn't for me. And I did not like the ending. Yeah. <laughs> Go back and change it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I agree. You know, like this, I I think (laughs) the good news is that even though I gave this a two, the other one is a five. So like, Mm -hmm. you know, that averages out to being pretty okay. I will continue to give Casey chances as well. I think this was just a rough book. Um, But like, I don't think you're down and out and I won't give up on you. No. I will not. But another thing, too, is, like, I, you know, I think to a certain extent it decreases, like, I think when you make everybody in a story like this queer, it, like, decreases the, the, the not the value of it, but it just makes it so much more unrealistic. And it's also, like, realistically I I know like a lot of queer people like to stay within their community but like you can have straight friends like Mm -hmm. I don't know it just felt like too over the top you know and it's the 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 flip side to that is like having like the token queer person in a book like in other books they like to do that a lot we were just talking Um, about this too like when she was here last week how mm -hmm. it's super annoying when you're reading a book and they just throw in a token person in there just to be like "Mm, i'm so inclusive but then the story the guy's giving off homophobic vibes the entire time yeah and so like it's kind of like two sides of the spectrum this one i think was just like (laughs) why is everyone gay i don't know (laughs) it's just like it's too much and it makes it like it always it it almost makes the plot like silly. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, like silly. Um especially like I I they kind of already have like a queer friend group at the beginning mm-hmm. and it, like they just uh, yeah. So That's what I mean by everybody's gay. Like she had her little small group of queer people who were not coming out until they had already planned to leave the small town that they are in because it's a bigoted small town. Yeah. And then it turns out that everybody (laughs) at the school is gay. Right. And so I'm just like, like, I think it would be different plot wise if like she was like the only like gay person. She didn't have any friends that were like that at all. And then like, she kind of like a found family of gay people, Mm -hmm. but like, Mm -hmm. I'm just like, how, first of all, how big is this private school? Yeah. And also, how is the the Christian private school recruiting only gay teenagers? <laughs> True. <laughs> like, what? I don't know. Maybe there is a correlation there. Like, you know, super religious parents sending their kids to schools that are super religious to, you know, pray the gay away or something. Maybe. But, like, a lot of these people didn't even realize for themselves until without without sh- fucking Shara Wheeler, <laughs> I hate her. She sucks. I hate her. Mm-hmm. Manipulative, 
annoying pick me. Yeah. I kissed Sarah Wheeler. You should have punched her. Shara. I don't know. Shara. Which is also stupid. She's a blonde girl with green eyes. Name her Sarah. I don't even know where the name Shara comes from. I don't know, but it sounds more like ethnic. It it does. It sounds like a, like an Arabic sort of name. And she's blonde. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. I don't know. And I, I no. literally can't picture Chloe in my head at all. I have an image of Chloe, but there's not a single person in this world who looks like... Well, there's a ton of people who look like her. But, like, nobody that I, like, famously... I can just be like, they look looks like this person. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Not and not Smith, your best Smith work. Smith in my head was also, like, Miles Morales. Like, it just, like, the character yeah. Miles Morales. I, I, I kind of pictured him that way, too. Yeah. Oh. Oh, my the- God. The girls are fighting. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, well, I have to go do an Instagram live and apologize for my behavior. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that will remedy everything, and then you can act like an entirely different person. Yeah, then I'll cut off all my hair and dye it pink. Perfect. That's your character arc. That's my whole new personality, everybody. All right. Well, okay. Do you have anything else you want to say about I no. Shara Wheeler? No. Okay. No. <laughs> um, all right. Well, if you want to know what we're doing when we're not here, we are on Instagram and Pinterest and TikTok for the next six months until it gets banned. Um, but, you know, we'll be there for the next six months if you want to see what we're doing on there. <laughs> um, pending the sale of the Chinese portion of TikTok. Um, if you want to follow us on there, you can. If you are watching on YouTube, hearts, hearts all around. Thank you so much for um, being here with us today. Apologies again for my silly little cat girl ears. If you're listening to us on Spotify, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yes. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. And, um... Hmm. Is that it? I think um, it. yeah. I think, Except, yeah. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. This one, I think, comes out right after St. Patty's Day. So happy, mm. happy St. Patty's Day. Yeah. Uh, you can't see it. Safe, safe day. But I'm wearing a shirt that says, who's your patty? Hmm. Hilarious. Thank you. I yes. I would have worn green. I look great in green usually because I've got red hair. I know. You're like a little Irish princess, but you're not right Irish at all. I was looking at myself in the mm-hmm. uh, thing. Like these are like the worst colors for me right now. Like I just look like the red is washing me out. The pink is just doing me no favors. I got like a pink background still for Valentine's Day. It's a mess. That's okay. We're gonna come back twice as strong next week, and I will still yeah. be in black as per usual. I will be hot again next week. <laughs> <laughs> Double it and give it to the next week. Yeah, exactly. If I'm not hot next week. It's over. She's gonna. She's done. She's gonna be triple hot the week after that. <laughs> Eventually, I'll just have to be so hot that like I'll be on fire. So she she's gonna be. Ch- yeah, she's gonna be chatting. All I'm right, like that no. guy from uh, Monsters Inc. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Well, all that is left for us to say is see you next week and have happy reading. reading.